Good evening. My name is Juan Cruz and I'm the principal of Edinburgh College of Art here at the University of Edinburgh and it's my great pleasure to welcome you to the launch of our graduate shows. Tonight and over the following weeks we'll be staging a number of events. These include discussions, interactive events, showreels, spotlights on student work and at the end of this evening even a DJ set from our famous We Red Bar. Today also marks the launch of our Graduate Show website where our students have had the opportunity to showcase their work through portfolios that use videos and images and texts to document the work that they've been doing throughout the year. It's been a difficult and challenging year for everybody and our students have responded magnificently to the challenges that they faced. And I think if you take time to look at the Graduate Show site, and I do recommend you take some time to do so, you will see some remarkable feats of ingenuity, creativity, resilience and determination that students have demonstrated in order to continue to make work in what have been very, very unusual circumstances from their homes, from their rooms, uh, without access to the same kinds of resources that they would normally have. But I think you'll find, like I have, that this does not at all diminish their work. As well as the Graduate Show site, we've also been able to stage an exhibition of some of our students' work here uh, on campus, and I do hope that some of you also have the opportunity to see that. They will now follow showreels from the School of Art, the School of Design, the Edinburgh School of Architecture and Landscape Architecture, the School of History of Art, and the Reed School of Music, where colleagues and students will talk in more detail about the work that they've been doing. I do hope you enjoy the evening. I also hope and trust that you will return to the site to look at the graduate portfolios as well as the really rich array of events that will be taking place over the coming weeks. And I hope you will, like me, celebrate and be impressed by the tenacity, the depth and the joy of the work of our graduating students. Thank you very much. Courage and motivation. Perseverance and dedication. Ingenuity and innovation. Creative outlet and confidence. Excited to present my body of work alongside my peers. My photographic practice questions whether there is sufficient respect of nature to provide for humans and the rest of the world's biodiversity to coexist. For my project, I became an inquiring researcher to confront anthropogenic climate change caused by overexploitation of the Earth's natural resources. I explore the techno-utopian idea of recreating plant life artificially through bioengineering. I've taken on the challenges of the last year by using the autonomy of digital photography to continue my project and find new ways to explore my interests. The main themes within my work are time, memory, decay and preservation, with the subject of ruins and the relationship to capitalism and politics. Making work at home during lockdown, I've been a lot more limited in terms of scale, materials and processes, but in a way it's made my practice more authentic. I became interested in autodestructive art because it embodies the themes of my work. I study a unique joint degree shared between art and history of art. My research sits right at the intersection of these two strands. I began a performance project with my artistic collaborator called An Archaeology of the Home, based on the interactive, performative techniques that I was writing about, using objects from my own home to do so. My work lingers on the border between fact and fiction, contemporary art and writing collating prose and imagery through drawing, animation and coding. I work with figures in ink, charcoal and collage, often mixing textures and physicality with the digital. Storytelling holds a strong thread in all my work, relating back to my own experiences of queerness, of connection, belonging and remembering. I use painting and printmaking to create collage compositions, bringing together everyday domestic objects in imagined spaces. This year, we've not had a dedicated space in the studio, but I was able to set up a desk in a friend's shed with an area to gather my source material. My installation, Domestic Battlefront, represents the home as a place of security or conflict. This year's graduate students at the School of Art have had to work in extremely different and sometimes difficult situations. They've shown great imagination through new modes of art making, engaging with unusual environments, 
exploring what an art space might be and examining how they can reach different audiences. The students have refined their disciplinary and interdisciplinary skills through working with materials in new ways, from 3D printmaking to sustainable sculpture, exploring questions through their practice around environmental and social sustainability. We hope as a result of this year's experience, they now have a unique set of skills to bring into their future career and practice. Creative outlet and confidence. Strong emphasis on collaboration. Courage and motivation. Independent as a designer. Perseverance and dedication. Ingenuity and innovation. My final year project is a hospital train to transport COVID-19 patients to different locations around France to deal with the shortage of hospital beds. I have been exploring speculative futures based on the foundation of transhumanist principles. My work is focused around the idea that we will one day merge with technology as a means of overcoming our fragile existence. Working from home has introduced some obstacles, such as working with resin and giant bits of fabric. It has been such a source of comfort to be able to switch off, get lost in my work and just enjoy the process of making. My project this year looked into how folkloric stories are based in community, but also form a sort of collective memory and history. My main project is concerned with immigration and memory, a widely discussed question in the current world. I illustrated the problem in a picture book project through the form of a fable. I created a collection that proudly voices my community's contribution to the UK from colonial times till now and to particularly celebrate South Asian women. The fashion programme's push for diversity is inspiring and necessary. COVID-19 influenced the outcome of my dissertation. Instead of physical data sculpture, I created a digital data comic the biggest trouble for the older man was not enough food and drink. My project uncovers the difficult situations of marginal groups under lockdown in China. My animated short film is about a protagonist discovering a grey hair and spiralling into panic in which the hair becomes her tormentor. I'm drawing on themes of body image and insecurity or feeling uncertainty and being conscious of the passing of time. I've been working with bead weaving techniques to adorn my jewellery as well as translating images into beaded compositions. Repetitive and meticulous techniques that require intense periods of focus appeal to me because they allow me to study these materials and make creative decisions in the process. The MFA course emphasised ingenuity and encouraged innovation when approaching documentary form and challenged us to reconsider story structure. She's in heaven. I, I like to say also that she's traveling, <laughs> you know. I wanted my film to help normalize the conversation around the sensitive issue of pregnancy loss. We completed multiple briefs under the mentorship of industry professionals at Design Bridge Amsterdam. In my individual practice, I've covered a variety of projects from conceptual to commercial, and I've been able to experiment and become a more versatile designer. My graduate work is a celebration of Soviet Russian constructivist ideals, which I took as inspiration for my modern textiles collection. I have created a temporary print bed at home with the help of our technicians, which has allowed me to carry on printing for my final collection. I have great pleasure in introducing you to the work of our graduates from the School of Design in 2021. Put simply, they are graduates like no other. They have faced significant challenges and obstacles during their final year of study, yet their resultant work is exceptionally strong and more significant than ever. These are graduates that will make more impact on the future industries than any year before them, embodying the key attributes that make the best and most globally facing creative influencers. You will be able to view a range of work that spans a wealth of important subjects where our students demonstrate their ability to think compassionately to address equalities, innovation and environmental impact amongst many other themes and creative concepts. 
Please support our graduates as they enter their careers in the creative industries. They are more adaptable, ingenious and employable than ever. We look forward to seeing how their careers flourish as they leave Edinburgh College of Art. ingenuity and innovation, creative approach to problems, experimentation and visual output. I'm proud to be graduating this year. I look forward to the chance to celebrate graduating with the rest of my cohort in person. The school encourages us to do animations, models and experiments to explore and evolve our design thinking. We link our projects to current and future events, such as the upcoming United Nations Climate Change Conference. In my projects, inspired by the COVID lockdown scenario, I initiate a transportation revolution that reveals the existing car-dominated culture. You can see a city with no cars, less pollution, and the return of wildlife ecosystems. Our group has looked at the narratologies that exist in and around the city of Ahmedabad, studying how they shape the perception of the urban fabric at different scales. We aim to articulate them within a proposed architecture. We had the pleasure of visiting Amdabad at the beginning of our second semester. A lot of material is grounded in that visit, including our walk along the Salt Marsh route. Before lockdown, we used workshops to test ideas on different scales with models and also developed a series of drawings. As an alternative to an exhibition, we found ways to use films and a website to explore the space of our project. This year, I set out to explore the role of landscape architects in the art of living on a damaged planet. Studying the bioregion surrounding the Cromarty Firth, my proposal explores the socio-economic, ecological and cultural opportunities of restoring peatland landscapes. The online delivery of the course this past year gave me the opportunity to develop new skills in storytelling. I used animation techniques to communicate a compelling narrative for the project. Working from home this year has pushed our problem-solving skills even further. We have been using Miro software to pin up visuals and we transformed our flat into a studio for making a film. Throughout our four years at Asala, a great emphasis has been placed on drawing, experimentation and visual output, as we have been encouraged to work through creative processes when approaching practical problems. For our main project themed On the Edge, we have looked at both literal and theoretical coastal edge conditions and how such edges can be defined in our local site, Leith. Our main theme for this year is the importance of parks. The main question we have asked ourselves is how parks will adapt to the future of a post-pandemic world. Despite doing our final year of landscape architecture online, the importance of landscape and the outdoors has never been more prevalent in these crazy lockdown times, for our degree could not be more relevant. I've never been more excited to congratulate Asala's graduates in architecture, landscape architecture and architectural history. This year we trained ourselves in resilience and agility and we developed new tools to engage with spaces and landscapes that are at the heart of our practices. The result is a body of graduate work that is compelling, innovative and operates at the highest level. Our graduates have fulfilled all requirements for their programs and demonstrated professionalism to our accrediting bodies. That is a real achievement in a year like this one. Creative freedom. Tenacity courage and motivation, perseverance and dedication, ingenuity and innovation. My art historical research and essays inform much of my art practice. Doing both together made me more confident in each of them separately. During the past year, being away from studios meant I had to think outside of my usual means to continue making art. If it weren't for being back in Cyprus, I might not have turned to mediums like digital collages or filmmaking, which have become my primary practice. For me, this year has been dominated by issues and debates regarding Asian representation. My dissertation was themed on how race is encoded into AI and how that reflects assumptions around the role of Asian women. 
My tutors have encouraged a lot of creative freedom, which has pushed me to explore contemporary issues in creative ways. As an MA Fine Arts student, with an equal split between art and history of art, I have approached works more critically, placing myself in the shoes of the creator, which ultimately adds to the depth of analysis. My dissertation focuses on the official nationalist themes and narratives around a collection of female portraits owned by Indonesia's first president. This gave me insights into the cultural knots and nuances of being an Indonesian woman today. Inspired by the dramatic landscape of Greyfriars Kirkyard, I decided to focus my dissertation on Scottish funerary sculpture. Due to the lack of scholarly material, the project called for first-hand research. While there was a difficulty in accessing records during lockdown, I was lucky that much of my primary material was outdoors. I've made connections with Edinburgh World Heritage Graveyards project, and I hope that my research may have a relevance and utility beyond the university. History of Art at the University of Edinburgh is the second largest history of art department in the UK. We've long offered a diverse and challenging curriculum. When most institutions were focusing on European art, we also offered courses on Chinese and Islamic art. Since then, we've continued to lead in expanding the curriculum and have hired new staff who specialize in the areas of Southeast Asian, Japanese, and Mesoamerican art. Additionally, we've introduced new courses on pressing issues, such as cultural policy, ecology, and colonialism. Student dissertations are our capstone project, reflecting four years of engagement with this diverse and outward-looking curriculum. Above all, though, it demonstrates our students' abilities as critical, independent, flexible thinkers. And it's this that's at the heart of everything we teach from the first class to the last. And we couldn't be more proud of their accomplishments. ingenuity and innovation. The shared passion for creativity and expression. The community that we've been able to build over these past four years has been one of my favourite things. The wide range of modules has allowed me to develop and become a well-rounded musician. Learning new skills such as video editing and sound recording, I now have a few more strings to my bow. The Tove Memorial Prize adopted an online format, providing a platform for myself and fellow students to demonstrate our abilities and share some great music with a digital audience. My degree appealed to me because of how it fuses technology and creativity. I've learned a lot of different concepts and skills from both these fields and it's allowed me to be the artist and creator that I am today. I've also been able to do sound design and composition for my own video games, and I wrote, recorded and produced my own EP. The past year has brought us all together in a sense. There was a much more supportive atmosphere among students and societies because everyone understood how difficult it was. I completed a 40-minute recital taking the theme of using music to travel around Europe throughout the Romantic era and celebrating the differences and similarities between nationalities. I also produced a composition portfolio of works ranging from an upbeat orchestral work inspired by Scottish folk music to a solo cello work depicting injustices faced by victims of modern slavery. In the Reed School of Music, there is a shared passion for creativity and expression, and we have explored our individual interests through the research of our dissertations. My role as student representative has ensured that the voices of every student is heard, and we have worked collaboratively to preserve the vibrant, tight-knit community that surrounds the school. For my dissertation, I have researched the benefits of music therapy for those suffering from dementia. I have found that this project has really boosted my academic confidence. Across four years, I've studied creative industries, performance, acoustics and music history. I've been analysing Edinburgh festivals for my dissertation and when they were cancelled, the atmosphere of the city completely changed. I had to find the motivation to keep going and write my essays because one day it could be me finalising the programme for some of the biggest art festivals in the world. 
I'm very proud to be celebrating the achievements of this year's music students on our undergraduate BMOS, MA and music technology programmes. Music students have continued to engage with communities across the city, uh, working with school teachers and collaborating with school children to create new musical experiences together. Music is such a communal and social endeavour, one of those things that's been so lacking during the pandemic, and yet the students have managed to share their music with us and with each other in wonderful ways. They've invited us into their homes and shown us performing on their instruments without a concert hall there, but with the implication of a concert hall. And you can see just how much this music deserves to be heard uh, in these big spaces as soon as they open again. Huge thanks and congratulations to all the staff and students in this year's graduating cohort and special thanks to all the friends and family who've supported them on their journey.